Hi, this is Frank Carmody. Today we're going to take a look at Inventor 2013, uh, and specifically we're going to look at um, creating assembly files. So up to this point, uh, we have only used part files, um, and now we're going to take the leap into creating assembly files. So um, the first step here is to create two constituent part files. So two part files that I'm then going to put together into an assembly file. So we're just going to do this very easily here. Okay, so my first my first part file I'm going to create, notice I did a 2D sketch, I clicked on the plane, now I'm creating a circle. Of course you need a dimension at this point. So you're going to be putting these parts together so you have to dimension absolutely everything. So we have a one, di one inch diameter circle, I'm going to go finish 2D sketch, then I'm going to go ahead and extrude that one, di one inch diameter circle and it's going to be a four inch uh, long cylinder. Okay, so remember we're doing very simple uh, a simple assembly here, so that's that's my first part. I'm going to go ahead and save it off. Um, okay, so okay, so that's my peg. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave this open. Um, now I don't necessarily need to, but uh, it's it's a lot easier if I do. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go up and create a new part file. And notice that a couple of things happen here. A couple of things happen. And uh, just a second here. My taskbar is not going away, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust the taskbar. For some reason, it's not auto hiding. Okay, I'll show you. Uh, I'll just move the window up here so you can see a little bit better. So what I wanted to show you was once you have two IPTs open, notice that we have notice that we have two uh, two tabs down at the bottom here. So we have our peg that we just saved off, and then we have our new part, which is calling part eleven. So notice the two tabs down here, and I can switch between them. Uh, so that's something in the interface that you haven't seen yet. Okay, so we're going to create our 2D sketch, um, and this time we're going to create a rectangular block with a circle hole in the middle. Okay, so so basically we're going to take a rectangle, we're going to make it a four-inch block. Zoom all, click, pull, click. Uh, we're going to make it two inches wide. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put a one-inch circle in the middle, which is going to be our hole that eventually our peg is going to fit into. Okay, so we have a one-inch hole. Okay, and then we're going to, of course, dimension this uh, distance away from the side. Okay, so there we have it. Right click finish 2D sketch. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to extrude. Uh, and we're just going to extrude that one inch. Okay, so we're going to click OK, zoom all. So this is what we have. So we have a block with a hole in it, and we have a peg. Okay. All right, now let's say, oh, okay, so we have this block with this hole in it, right? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and save that off. block and save okay um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create our assembly file um, so I'm going to go up to our my new my new drop down I'm going to say create assembly okay and now basically what an assembly file is is that it's a file where I put together part files into one place now, it's very important to, to understand what an assembly file is. An assembly file doesn't store any information in the part file. An assembly file doesn't store any information that's already stored in the part file. So that means that uh, if you don't have the part files, the assembly file can't show anything. So uh, let me give you an example of an error that happens to students a lot. What they'll do is they'll save their assembly to a specific spot on their computer, to a specific folder. They'll, and then their IPTs will be saved to another folder. But they're not really paying attention to where they're saving things. 
then what will happen is they'll move one of the IPTs out of wherever it was saved originally. This creates an awful lot of problems. Okay, uh, and I'll, I'll, we're not going to demonstrate that today, but the best thing that you can do when you're starting out with Inventor is just to save everything into one folder. Any project where you're going to be using a bunch of IPTs in one assembly, save all the IPTs and the assembly file into a single folder and you will stop all of your problems from happening. Okay, so we have our assembly. We're going to go ahead and save it. And I'm forgetting my naming convention here. Okay, so I'm going to go and get my naming convention. Okay. Okay, so this is my assembly file. Okay, so my assembly's been saved. Now, how I put these part files into the assembly is this. I click on place. Uh, and then I go and actually find the IPT file in my uh, in my system. Okay, so I'm going to go to desktop, and I've been saving this all in a single folder. Okay, so I go find my peg. Okay, so notice this is where my naming convention really comes in. Click my lesson ten peg, open. Okay, now notice the first. Oh, and I already made a mistake. <laughs> the first. Um, so I'm going to right click, click OK. The first uh, part that I put into the um, the uh, file, the assembly file, is fixed. Okay, so notice that when I try to drag this part around and move it, I cannot move it. Okay, that's because the first part that you drop into the assembly file is what we call uh, grounded. Okay, so notice that if I right click on the part in my browser bar, if I right click on the part and unclick grounded, notice then I can move this part around. Okay? All right, so Inventor automatically grounds the first part that you place into the assembly. Okay, so let's go ahead and place another part. Okay, so this time I'm going to go ahead and place the block. Okay, and notice the first part, it automatically created one. On the second part, you actually have to click. Now, you can click as many times you want. So that's one part, two parts, three parts. Notice I can place as many of these as I want. I'm going to control Z back, okay? Uh, and notice that got me out of the tool. Normally you right click and click OK to stop placing those parts. So let's go ahead and we're going to redo this just the way that you really should do it. Okay, so we're going to place our first part. Remember that the first part is the one you want to stay uh, stationary in the drawing. So it's like your main part of the assembly. Uh, you know, sometimes there isn't really a main part, so you can just choose one. But it's kind of the part that you want to stay stationary. So we're going to click Open. Remember, it places one automatically. Then we right-click OK to stop placing those parts. We're going to click Place again. This time we're going to choose Peg. Click Open. And we're going to click Peg. We're going to click to place one peg. Then right-click and click OK. All right, now we have two parts in our assembly. Okay, now, here's another important thing to remember about an assembly. You don't move the parts around to place them. Okay, this is not, like, I can I can move this peg around so that it fits in the hole, but that's not how you should, you should be positioning things in assembly, okay? What you're doing is, in assembly, you're going to place constraints on the parts which cause them to be in a certain location. So I don't move things around unless unless I need to to place the constraints. I don't move things around to position them. What I do is place constraints on them. So let's place our first constraint here uh, on the peg. Okay, so, that, so round parts, um, things that have kind of a, a center line, holes that have a center line, and, and other items that have a center line are really the easiest things to constrain. Okay, so um, notice that this constraint dialog is really where you're going to do most of your work in the assembly. So we have a type is a mate, angle, tangent, and insert. So that's in the type field here. And then each type has a, has a separate solution, separate set of solutions. Okay, so the majority of the constraints that you're going to do to start out with are, are the type is mate, and the solution is going to be mate or flush. Okay. So let's take a look. Um, now it's going to be confusing that we're mating the center line, uh, but we'll go into a whole uh, whole other video on constraints. So in this case, for our very first assembly, we're going to mouse over the center of this uh, round object. Notice that my center line highlights, so I click on it. 
I go over my hole, notice my center line highlights, and I'm going to click on that. And you get that kind of nice uh, loud sound in a lot of cases unless you turn it off. So we're going to go ahead and click apply. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and click exit to get out of the, the assembly, or I'm sorry, the constraint dialog. So now I have this peg inside the hole. And notice if I try to drag this around, that, that peg will not move out of that hole. Okay, no matter what. I can drag it, I can move it, and those center lines will stay together. Okay, so this has been our introduction to assembly files. Uh, I hope it helped, and good luck.